Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, it's my privilege to be the moderator for this session. A uh, special thank you to Jay and the Novartis team, uh, Stephanie and Scott and others who are organizing this. Uh, it's a really nice and also much needed gesture, I think, for us to collectively engage in collaboration and data sharing in among not just among big pharma among themselves, but also uh, with the academic experts. I think, you know, if anything, this um, pandemic has convincingly demonstrated is the absolute need for us to come together in um, unprecedented ways. Uh, true to our 240-year uh, heritage as the largest Japanese uh, pharma company um, that I work for, we at Takeda have adopted a very open collaborative model of uh, coronavirus uh, early discovery research. Uh, despite us being not in infectious disease area itself. Uh, it's been a true privilege to be part of uh, this entire effort globally, whether it is being uh, in a co-lead role with the IMI Care Program, which is a very large Europe-based consortium, or as part of the structure-based consortium here in US, or indeed a larger discussion among pharma that is happening um, in terms of true pandemic preparedness, which is uh, the Intrepid uh, Alliance. Now, in terms of what targets are emerging out there on the horizon beyond the three very specific, very cool sessions that we have heard today, um, the virus itself is a, a very small yet very extremely effective uh, machinery essentially that auto replicates with very high fidelity in an extremely fast and efficient manner, right? We know that the two thirds of the genome, the five prime end of the genome codes for one gene, the polyprotein that then subsequently results in 16 non-structural proteins. Um, of course, of that, we have the NSP5, which we heard about and the NSP12, the protease and the polymerase. And the other components are something that we hope to see essentially a tease from the various experts, the three experts you'll hear about today. Um, there is the uh, helicase, the NSP13, which is obviously, uh, it's a helicase that acts like an ATP hydrolysis driven uh, pump or a scaffolding protein that twists and turns the RNA and positions it for uh, competent replication. Uh, we have very nice, very cool data coming out of uh, Rockefeller from uh, France and Marseille and also from Oxford that you'll hear later today. The other two proteins are the NSP14 and NSP16, the two methyl transferases that cap the mRNA and, and therefore matures it and prevents it from degradation. 